you run a job in Hadoop, uh, you basically upload your job to a master node. And this master node basically keeps track of all the nodes in the cluster and it assigns tasks and data to each node. It also hosts the HTTP job tracker, so you can basically follow your job, watch the progress, and go back and uh, view previous jobs. It also queries each node and kills any task that does not respond and rebatches out that killed task to another to the next available node. Uh, here's an example of the job tracker. You see, you can see right here. Um, we spent hours right here watching these progress bars just go by slowly. Um, you can see there was 104 map tasks because we had 100 processors. So uh, we basically wanted to get it as close to as possible to 100. And um, it's basically the job track it looks like. Okay, so what we've talked about so far is taking an input data set, running it through the two phases, and spitting out an output data set. Um, then you have a facility called distributed cache where you can compute against in your map and reducer a second data set. Uh, distributed cache is just pretty much a network file share. You start with large read-only files. Um, your mappers and your reducers receive a pointer to where the files are stored in distributed cache. Um, this is a really important one. You have to copy the file out of distributed cache into the RAM on each node. So you create a hash map in your configure method, which goes above your mapper or your reducer. Um, I had a job where I didn't and ran it for like five and a half hours and then crashed the whole cloud. Bad idea. You want to try and avoid that. So now we're going to talk about streaming. Streaming is really cool. It's basically an interface that uses standard in and standard out to stream the input and output to each node. So it basically gives you the ability to port mappers and reducers to any language that you can read from standard in and write to standard out. Um, input is read from standard in. Here's an example in Python. Um, input variable is uh, system.standardin, basically running through the read input function. And output is written to standard out. It uh, has to be outputted as a hash map, which is, in the, which is basically a string in the form of key tab value. Here's another example. It's a string variable tab string variable passing in key and value. The streaming utility packages all your files into a single jar, which is sent to all the nodes. And any distributed cache files you want accessible to your streaming job are similar to the current working directory on each node. So you have direct access to, in, to any distributed cache file. Um, here's how you would run a streaming job. Um, you basically uh, call the Hadoop jar, and you call up the streaming uh, interface and you basically pass all these flags input output mapper reducer any files you want to be packaged in the jar any cache files you want to be similar to the directory and a whole bunch of job configuration flags um, here's an example training set is the input data set we have Netflix output for output uh, for output directory uh, mapper is you call it bas you basically call uh, from the current work current working directory on on each node. So, in order to call PyMapper, you have to include this file and in the jar file, so you're able to access it from right here. And um, you can access any executable. If there's grep on each node, you can access grep. You can access awk. You can basically access any executable from right here. And a cache file. You can see we uh, access a file in the HDFS and symlink it to movietitles.txt, so that is right where it's available from the code. Uh, reporting and streaming. So you're using standard in and standard out to basically handle your data. You have to use standard error to communicate with the master node. Since master node kills any job that doesn't report back, uh, you have to use this, uh, you have to use a counter after every line you process, and you basically do this by uh, writing the standard error, report, colon, counter, and then your job name, uh, the phase, so it would be mapper in this case, and then comma one. And you could also use status messages to track errors in the log files. All right, so since uh, Hadoop is an implementation of Google's MapReduce framework, everything in Hadoop has a Google equivalent. So Hadoop uses the HDFS, the Hadoop distributed file system, which is the equivalent to Google's file system. Uh, it's high fault tolerant, runs on low cost hardware. You have a high throughput streaming access to data, which is really nice uh, for this framework. Uh, this one's really important. Data is split on 64 meg blocks and replicated into storage. That 64 megs is important because when you create a mapper node, um, if you have a 65 meg file, it's going to split into a 64 meg file and a 1 meg file, and you're going to create two mappers. One's going to run at full capacity, one's going to run really fast and be really inefficient. 
So you really have to consider the input data that you're looking at, how many files to split it into, and what size you want to make each file. Um, HBase, all right, this is the equivalent to Google's big table, and this is a non-relational database. Um, it's a really tough concept to grasp for all of us. Uh, we grew up with relational databases. It's not built for real-time querying. You run your website and pull users' login information out of HBase. You're moving away from per-user actions where you're saying, take this user, link it to a bunch of tables, and pull me a field out of it towards per-action data sets. So you're saying, show me all of the users who did this and give me that huge giant data set and then run that through this MapReduce program. Um, HBase is distributed, multi-dimensional. Uh, it's denormalized data, so you're not worrying about BCNF or anything like that. You're not trying to strip it down. You just store everything you need with links to anything else everywhere. <laughs> That's why it's really hard for us to grasp it, because we grew up with relational databases. Um, okay, so the table of schema defines your column families. Um, okay, so HBase is like a database of a bunch of other databases. You have column families. You have a row key and then a column family, where inside of your column family at that cell, you have a bunch more columns. Um, and then coming down off that on the z-axis, you have uh, versions, so you can have timestamps. So like for Google, when they go scrape a web page, dump into their search engine, they grab it today. And then when they scrape it again tomorrow, they'll drop it down on the z-axis to the next version. So they can go back through time on the same data set and see the changes over time. Um, everything in the table, uh, except for the table name, is stored as a byte array, which uh, works with HDFS for efficiency. Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud, they basically have a cloud that, um, they have a web service that you can basically go and purchase a resizable compute cloud on uh, in their data center. Uh, Hadoop is packaged as a public EC2 image, so it, oh, it's really easy to set up. You just go to the web page, you choose how many clusters, how many nodes you want on your cluster, and you click Hadoop, and you click load, and it basically dumps you into Hadoop, and you can just start writing, start running jobs. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to their website. There's a link right there. And uh, here's some pricing they have, just for example. They charge 10 cents per hour for a basic small Linux node. And this is per node. So if you wanted 100, it'd be 10 cents times 100. And you also have to pay for storage accessing your data. All right, so uh, the first project that we used to really learn about Hadoop was the Netflix Prize. Um, it was a competition that Netflix put out if you could beat the algorithm, the movie recommendation algorithm that Netflix was using in 2006 by a 10% or better RMSE, they'd give you a million dollars cash. Um, so they gave you a public two gig data set of movie user ratings. Um, here's some stats on the data set that we use. Um, there's 17,770 movies in the data set. Each movie got its own text file, so you got that many files. Um, the movie IDs uh, were arranged from 1 to 17,770 sequentially. Customer IDs uh, had gaps in them. There's about 480,000 customers that were giving ratings for movies. Uh, ratings were an integer from 1 to 5, and uh, it also gave you the dates rated. It's down here in the bottom left. Um, the first line of every file was the movie ID followed by a colon, and then the whole rest of the file was just this, is customer ID, rating, and then date rated. Um, okay, so the default input data set, if you just take that straight off the download and dump it into Hadoop, you're gonna create 17,770 mapper nodes because it creates one node per file, which is horribly inefficient on a 100 node cluster. Um, so we needed to optimize the number of files to the number of mappers available. Uh, since it's two gigs, we go back again to that 64 meg split. Um, so we had to, that wasn't really an issue for us because 64 times 100 uh, was still less than the two, or more than the two gigs. So uh, we just made 104 files for use on 100 procs. So it didn't split any of the 104 because they were all less than the 64 megs. Um, and this ensured that all the mappers were utilized, optimizing file input output. <laughs> 